Hello and welcome to another AIC video. A uh, little bit different of a setup. I'm sitting down. Uh, I have a hopefully a, a prompter here in front of me I can use to uh, help me with my video today. Uh, so a little bit of changes. If you like what you see, let me know. So if you have been on my channel for any length of time, you know that I love to look for new sub $200, $250 laptops. In this category, I find a ton of value for people shopping for new laptops and they just keep getting better and better every year. You get a lot of punch for your money. Uh, today on the table, we have a gateway that I picked up from Walmart. Uh, now, it kind of has a stupid model name. It's a GWTC116-2BL. I'm guessing the BL stands for blue. It is the 11.6 inch touchscreen model. Um, and they come in, I've paid about $160 for mine, uh, but the price fluctuates uh, anywhere from about that up to about $200. Um, now, Gateway's a brand that's actually been around almost my whole life. Uh, a lot Growing up, a lot of my friends had Gateway computers in their home. Uh, they even had their own dedicated stores, kind of like Apple stores today, uh, where you go in and they were very budget-friendly, family-oriented computers. Often you would get, um, so it sounds so crazy today, but you get the computer, a monitor, keyboard, mouse, um, any external drive bays, things like that, kind of all as a package deal. Um, that was very aggressively priced. Uh, and so a lot of people I knew had them. And this uh, cow pattern box uh, is extremely familiar to me. It's, it's been around, like I said, most of my life. Uh, but in the early 2000s, they started to struggle and they were bought out by Acer Computer. And uh, about a decade ago or so, um, the brand quietly uh, disappeared from shelves. They, their, their models uh, lingered for quite a while and then they uh, quit producing them, but very recently, last year and a half or so, uh, Walmart has launched these as a Walmart exclusive brand. At least I've only seen them sold at Walmart or resold from Walmart. Um, as far as I can tell, it's still Acer who's making the computers just under the Gateway brand. So why Gateway? Really simply, money. Acer already owns the brand. They own all the marketing, branding, logos, everything. And so as far as costs go, that's a big cost of having a company is getting a branding up and going. So it was really easy to roll out something that they already had, but that was also unique for, say, Walmart. And so all they really had to do was just spin up some specific models for the brand. A lot of times that ends up just being some different cases, some different colors, and of course, a few different logos. Now, I see here in front of you the box, and I am going to mention the box. I've, I've been given grief in the past for mentioning boxes of systems but especially on a low-end system or even on a high-end system the packaging is the first thing you interact with with the system and it's really important that that packaging gives you a good feeling and the box that the laptop comes in is pretty darn good it's a nice sturdy box which means it's going to ship well the device inside is going to be well protected so you can buy this and send it to somebody or if you buy it off the internet and it gets shipped to you you know it's probably not going to get damaged um, it also is just a nice looking box. It's attractive. It doesn't look cheap. And so even though you're not spending a lot for a laptop, you feel like you're getting a lot with the packaging. Um, I know that uh, a lot of people may not agree with me, but it is definitely something that goes along. And so that's why companies like Gateway invest a little bit into these packages. And of course it has, like I said, the cow spots on here, just iconic. Um, people my age and older definitely will see this packaging and get that sense of nostalgia. And it's a recognizable brand, a brand that had some quality behind it. And so they're hoping to uh, use that to attract buyers. Now, documentation in the box is basically non-existent. There's a quick start guide, uh, but not a whole lot beyond that. Uh, today, computers don't really need a whole lot of uh, instructions. You boot up the computer, basically tells you how to use it the instant you open it. So. Uh, not really a big thing. You just get the laptop and the charging um, adapter for it. Now, what's inside the box? Well, in this case, we have the blue version of this particular notebook. It is a 360 hinge, which means it does open into a tablet as well as a normal laptop mode. 
All right, so this laptop does have an 11.6 inch 1366 by 768 display. It has a Celeron N4020 CPU, Windows 11 in S mode. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a second. It has 64 gigs of eMMC or flash storage and four gigs of RAM. Very standard stuff for this class of laptop. So standard, it matches exactly with my Asus L210M. Uh, a much better name, Asus, by the way. Thank you. Why these specs? Simple answer, Windows licensing. Just like netbooks of yore, Windows basically gives manufacturers uh, Windows for free on these systems. The goal being that in S mode, you are limited to installing apps from the Windows Store and limited to the Edge browser. Why? Because Windows is hoping to make up the cost long term on the back end through app purchases in the web store and or on um, ads in either Edge or the free apps. Uh, you also get a, a year free of Office 365. Why? So you, after a year, you will pay for that monthly or yearly subscription fee. You can switch out of S mode pretty easily and for free, but you're limited to what the system can run. Well, what can the system run? Honestly, not a ton. The Celeron N4020 is getting pretty old at this point. I first reviewed it well over a year ago, and it seems to be the main uh, Intel CPU available on these sub $300 net, uh, notebooks. The problem with that is that AMD has given us the 3020E, which crushes the CPU on every level, up and including graphics, and can be had in laptops that don't cost much more. Once you get above that $300 mark, you start to be able to get newer used laptop computers with 8th gen Core i5 processors, and buying a new cheap computer stops really making much sense. What about the rest of the computer? To start off with, this did ship with Windows 10, and even on the box it says uh, Windows 10 right there, uh, Windows 10 S. Uh, but as soon as I powered it on, it did offer to upgrade me to Windows 11, so I did. Uh, my personal opinion, this was a mistake. Windows 10 was a great upgrade to Windows 7, skipping Windows 8 entirely. 8.1 was not that bad, but not, a good, not good enough to stay installed on any of my systems as soon as 10 was available but 10 always seemed a bit half-baked. Good, but could have stood a little bit longer in the oven. 11, I'll keep 10 and hope that 12 fixes everything. Uh, I won't go too deep into it since this lap is a laptop review and not an OS review, but it doesn't seem to bring anything to the table with this laptop, if anything makes it harder to use. So if you buy this and it still has Windows 10, keep it on Windows 10. The screen on this computer is actually pretty good. It's a touch screen with big glass on the front, so plenty of glare, but it's bright, clear, with good viewing angles. It seems like this is an area where computers have done quite a bit of improving in the last couple of years. I haven't come across a bad screen in quite a while that has made the use of the system unacceptable. The hinge for the 360 is nice and tight, so you can have it flat, like so, or in a tent, like so or you can fold it all the way over. Now, the one problem I have with the tablet mode is it doesn't sit quite flush. I don't know if this is just my particular model or my specific laptop, but it doesn't sit quite flush. So you get a little bit of a wiggle between the two halves, and as you use it, the screen does bounce a little bit. Um, I would like to see that sit flush against the other half when using it. It does get a little annoying. Now, because of the glass front on this laptop, it does make the lid pretty heavy. And so if you have this open very far, it makes it kind of tippy and want to fall back. Um, it doesn't take much to get the keyboard side of it to be so light that, it, especially like if, in your, if it's in your lap, to want to kind of fall back. You're constantly feeling like you're having to hold it down with your wrists as you type. It doesn't give a very confident feeling when typing. Um, and so, that is one thing I like about it. You kind of have to have that screen up, um, more of an upright position. As far as typing, that too is an interesting experience. The keyboard is not great. The keycaps feel like they're very thin pieces of plastic with no, almost no substance to them at all. They are like barely a crust over the rubber domes. At the same time, they offer no resistance, but you can almost feel the domes themselves. It's, it's kind of a weird feeling when typing on it. 
and some weird key placements like the delete key being where the backslash would normally be and the backslash being down where the control key would be. And this arrangement of the up and down arrows with the right and left arrows, see how they're tiny up and down with these big uh, left and right? Now, that's my least favorite way of doing arrows. When I need to use arrows, usually up and down is the one I tend to use the most and having them be so tiny uh, is really annoying. A uh, similar story for the touchpad, it's on the smaller side and it's very cheap and hollow feeling. It just, uh, you don't even really have to put much pressure on it for it to, uh, if you put enough pressure on it to not actually click, but it will actually move around and kind of gives you a clicky feeling under your finger. Uh, it, it's it's just okay. I, I don't really like it. Um, it does have multi-touch functionality. I just don't really want to touch it. I'd much prefer a standard mouse. Uh, the touchscreen is accurate and easy to use. I've had some touchscreens that were frustrating, uh, but this has just enough bezel that I don't actually touch the screen by accident, especially when I'm using it in tablet mode. Uh, but it's not so big as to be ridiculous uh, screen to bezel ratio. Um, so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice size without being too big or too small. One thing that this laptop has is a very long battery life. It has a huge battery, and in testing, I regularly got about 10 hours of battery life out of it with normal use. Uh, the problem is that the charger that it comes with, let me show you. This charger is tiny, and it charges the laptop very slowly. And so you never really wanna go very long without charging it because if you ever do need to use it, um, it takes so long to charge the battery. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. Now, in using this laptop over the last couple of weeks, um, it does, it has felt kind of slow. My um, Asus L210M, which has basically the same hardware, the same CPU, memory, and storage configuration, uh, it feels faster. It, it really does. I don't know if that's Windows 10 or, or an 11 thing, or if there's something with the hardware, but I did do... I did run benchmarks and it is between about two and five percent slower than the L210M. So it is a little bit slower. Again, I don't know if that if I were to switch back to Windows 10, if that'd make a difference, if it'd make up uh, that two to five percent, but it does make a difference when using the laptop. Another area that makes this laptop feel a little bit slower is the Wi-Fi. It only connects my 2.4 gigahertz network. It doesn't support the five gigahertz. And I can feel it. My 2.4 network is loaded down with all my Internet of Things devices. So all my Echo Dots, all my TVs, everything like that. I saved the 5 gigahertz for me. And uh, so this running on that, I definitely feel it. It definitely is slower. It's having to compete for that bandwidth. Uh, ports on this laptop are also kind of confusing. There are some standard um, headphone, microphone jack, micro SD, one USB 2.0, one USB 3.0. But there's no USB Type-C, and the HDMI port is a mini HDMI. I don't know why. I guess ditching the Type-C port saves pennies, but is an HDMI is a mini HDMI port that much cheaper than a full-size HDMI port? The bezel is wide enough to accommodate one from the looks of it, or just don't include one at all, or include a Type-C that supports Display Port um, if you're going to require somebody to have a dongle, anyways. Uh, and if it needs to be smaller, that USB Type-C port would also make more sense. Um, but maybe the cost was too high. I don't know what it takes to add that support to a system, uh, but it should be a lot more useful than this is. Um, it, it's not, not, not a favorite thing for me. Now, another thing is the power button is on the side laptop being a tablet. That's a fairly common thing for them to do. But what it's missing is also a volume rocker. A lot of the other tablet or 360 notebooks that I've had uh, have the volume and power on the side there, which is a lot more useful of a feature um, and something I would have liked to see on here. Again, they are trying to save those pennies. I'm sure that's the reason why it was not included. Cost cutting is what you get with this laptop. It's kind of its main thing. Uh, and at $200, it just isn't enough to convince me to buy it over a used business cl class laptop with a fifth or sixth gen core processor. If you had to buy new, $30 more gets you nearly the same hardware with an upgradable storage slot in that uh, ASUS uh, L210 
to 10 M, uh, which negates one of the biggest le uh, limitations on these budget systems. You lose the touchscreen and the folding, but you get an overall uh, faster experience. And for another 40 or $50, you get the AMD 3020E, which is faster than the um, N4020 by like 40 or 50%. It's a lot faster. Um, I'll put a link to those in the description down below if you're looking for a new laptop kind of in this budget range. Um, but if I were to buy today, it definitely would not be this gateway, unfortunately. I feel like this is definitely more of a spur of the moment uh, purchase for somebody who just happens to be going through Walmart. So if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, feel free to leave those in the comments section down below. I'll do my best to answer. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an amazing day.